Happy holidays to the World Wide Web. You are now tuned in to a very special holiday episode of Group Chat. I know you're probably wondering what in the world is Group Chat. Well, we're glad you asked. It's a virtual safe space where young people come together to talk and share what's been on their minds. We're so excited to debut this new adolescent original series on New Year's Day. But as a special holiday treat, here's a sneak peek episode gift wrapped just for you. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit the notification bell so you don't miss the premiere on January 1st. <laughs> um, do you all have plans today? I know I'm here with my sister and we, you know, we are, of course, we put up our cute tree and we've been opening our presents, but what are y'all doing today? Honestly, I'm spending Christmas alone because I don't want to put my parents at risk. So I didn't travel home. I'm staying in Chicago. I'm not going to Florida. So my best friend and I decided to have a small Christmas at my house. Katie, what you doing? Um, same thing we do every year. It's just my parents, my sister and I. We opened our presents this morning and usually we go to like a family friend's house for dinner, but not doing that this year. So yeah. How about you, Eric? Yeah, I'm just having Asian Christmas, which is basically Christmas minus the religion part for people who are not. <laughs> literally, literally. Um, but yeah, it's me and my mom and my sister. And we open gifts and now we don't know what to do. So uh, that's usually how our <laughs> Christmas goes. But yeah, we're just having a good time. This time of year always makes me feel so like warm and fuzzy, even with COVID. Um, and I feel like a kid again. So I thought it would be fun for us to share some holiday throwbacks. So yeah. let's talk about mine first, y'all. <laughs> I love my family so much. This is actually a picture of um, my cousins, all of, like not all my cousins, but a big group of my cousins. And the reason I chose this picture is because this was actually our last Christmas with my older brother before he passed. So I thought this would be a really perfect picture to bring because we were so happy and that was such a good Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so that's my picture. Who wants to share next? I can share go, mine. Go, go. So this is a picture from a couple years ago when I was still in high school, I think, and it's of my mom. We got her this like floor cleaner thing and i just think that she looks really happy because usually she likes to buy her own gifts and she's like oh it's from the family but you know we decided to be better children than that and get her something even though it's not the most exciting gift but i just really like it because she looks she's about to like hurt someone with it and she's so <laughs> excited so that's mine. So my picture is from when I was like 10 years old. And so one of my ultimate favorite, favorite Christmas movies is The Grinch. My parents used to always take us uh, to Universal Studios or Busch Gardens or Disney World when it came to like the holidays. So in this specific picture, I picked it. It's my favorite because like you, Kiana, I also had a sibling that passed away. So in that picture, that is my little sister who is two years younger than me. And I definitely miss her a lot around the holidays as well too, so. Yeah. You're my soul sister. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Yeah, girl. I love the green. You already know. <laughs> so my picture, it's from Thanksgiving 2019. My forehead looks like a forever head, oh so <gasps> let's just move past that. Thanksgiving and Christmas, those are like our like two really big family gatherings. These are all my cousins as well. Wow. And this Thanksgiving is when I took like my first shot because <laughs> my cousins like to drink. So pretty memorable. Yeah, miss them a lot. Yeah, I was some cousins who like to drink too. So. <laughs> good, times, good times. We always have a party. So. <laughs> While there's no place like home for the holidays, every dinner table isn't always filled with holiday cheer. In a recent adolescent.net article, writer Raven Yamamoto described quarantine where her family as a never ending holiday dinner. To avoid heated debates and discussions, she writes that she keeps a list of safe topics of conversation in her head that include recipes to try and superhero <laughs> movies. <laughs> so the question is, how do you all deal with interacting with family members who have different views than you? Or is it even a requirement to interact with the family you don't even necessarily like? This is some 
some tea right here. <laughs> this this his home. This definitely is. This definitely his home. The reason why I moved away from home is because I know like people back at home, our views don't always align. So for me, like when it comes to like family members that I may not see eye to eye with, I set these uh, boundaries in place to where I'll check on in on you, you know, see how you're doing. But when it comes to certain conversations and certain topics, I just don't go there anymore. It's an energy drainer. And I think that like for me, my energy is is way more important as an adult. It's not that I'm forgetting about my family. It's that I'm you know, I'm coming into this new age of me being on my own or me being an adult. I totally see where you come from, Andrew. I feel like some, some fights are not worth fighting. I think that for me, it's, it's a case by case basis. I do love me a good debate, but at the end of the day, it's just about like having an open mind. And so I also kind of use those as opportunities to be like, well, you know what? I'm actually interested in your perspective, even if it's something that I do not agree with or something that is a little bit discriminatory like i will let you have the floor but generally i think it's just like a do what you need to do and i love that you that that's kind of like what you said if it's a healthy conversation for you and it's something that you feel like you want to put yourself through that's great but you don't have to like your family in fact i think <laughs> all of us don't don't like everyone in our family and so it's like you do you that's what i usually say I preach, 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 preach. I get it. I mean, I've had, I've actually had a situation recently, and I'm the most non-confrontational person you probably will meet. And my family is super close, like really, really, really close. And so it is rare for us to have a moment of contention. But the older I get and the more I'm experiencing things, I don't live in the South anymore. So life is different. It's not the same. Preach, I love the South, but there are some things about living there that I do not always vibe with because it's some stuff that hasn't progressed and so i had to have a conversation with a family member whom i love dearly i'm talking about she is like a second mom but i have to let her know like i don't agree with that and you can't call like for me we you know a lot of my families are christians so i was like you can't call yourself a christian and say what you just said so i can't really relate to y'all because i have the luxury of being one of the kids so I'm like, I'm never hanging around the adults. Like we're getting turned, we're in our own room. Um, when I do have those conversations or like any conversation with like any adult or distant relative, I think it's like partly cause I'm like a kid and partly because like we don't get to see each other that often. Our conversations are pretty surface level anyways. How school? Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> what are you gonna do with your life? Like those are already hard enough to answer on their own, but um, what I learned about myself this year is that like when a polarizing topic does come up, if it's somebody that I'm like close to or comfortable with, I'm not afraid to state my view. No, Katie, I totally feel you. I feel like something that I learned throughout this year, especially with all of the protests and this push for more political activism in your everyday lives is like, you know, sometimes those conversations are a point of education or connection or, or like the closest thing that some people are going to get. So this time around, I tried to push myself. It's all about moderation. It's all about finding that balance and making sure that you're good to yourself too, I think. Who are you most excited to spend time with this holiday season? Well, there's two options. So I guess my mom. <laughs> <laughs> what holiday tradition is overrated people are gonna hate me for this but like i definitely think dressing up together in the same outfit i like to be different um but that's just my personal opinion best holiday gift you ever received oh no too much <laughs> pressure i've gotten so many really good gifts over the years an electric guitar from my parents and an amp. Thanks, mom and dad. Love you. <laughs> Ooh, favorite holiday dish, because y'all know I like to eat. Um, my mama's dressing is second to none. Okay, let's just be clear. So it's probably that or my daddy's jambalaya, but that's it. So holidays are usually a time that we have huge festive dinners and celebrations with friends and family. However, this year it's being encouraged that we stay home and have Christmas or holidays alone to combat the spread of the virus. So what do you guys think? Should people be allowed to see their extended families this Christmas, this holiday season? What do you think will be the result of spending the holidays alone? Zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> zoom, zoom. <laughs> zoom, zoom. <laughs> do you wanna, do you wanna elaborate? Do you wanna throw it on the floor? Absolutely. So I think that, um, at least for me, like my Thanksgiving was very small. It, like, again, it was just me and my best friend. It was 
a different experience. Ultimately, I'm, I'm thinking bigger picture. Like I care about other people. I don't want, I don't want to put anybody in danger. And a lot of people have older relatives. And that ultimately was my decision of why I wasn't going to go home for Christmas. Because for me, I did have COVID. My mom also got COVID and my sister got COVID. It, it's not, you know, something that I want to feel on my conscience of of doing again. So for me, I want to be a responsible adult. And I think the test run for Thanksgiving was, it, it was honestly cool. Like I didn't even have traditional turkey. I had salmon and mimosas. Like it, Ooh, it, it that thing. I echo what you just said, honestly and truly. Um, I have lupus, so I'm already immune compromised. So when I came to LA, I knew I was staying put. And me and my sister were like, it's just gonna be me and you this year. We doing a tree, we doing it all. We gonna do what we can do. Um, Cause the truth of the matter is a quarter of a million families are gonna look to the left or look to their right and it's gonna be an empty chair. So I just don't wanna be one of the people that causes the empty chair this year. Cause it's hard. We already have lost enough. I feel yeah. as country as a world. So I just don't think, and then when I think about also like people, you know, on the other side of that, people spending it alone, I know depression is going to rise. We got to manage expectations starting right now. Like therapists need to go ahead and get ready for an influx after this is kind of calmed down and we can resume some type of normalcy. It's going to be an influx and we just need to be ready to support each other. That's just the truth of the matter. I completely agree with what you guys are saying. Um, Christmas it's huge for me and my family like it's the one gathering that like everybody can come together and like my cousins and I we do secret Santa and it's so different like knowing we're not gonna be able to see each other but I would much rather have that than like an empty chair two of my grandmothers both of them are at high risk and I would I would hate for this to be my last Christmas with them you brought up a point Andrew you wouldn't want to be responsible for for somebody contracting COVID and I literally, I could not live with that. I feel like that's one thing that anti-maskers or whatever they don't understand is that like, it's bigger than just yourself. You don't want to wear a mask. You want to go out and party like, cause that's what you want to do. But like, don't you also want your grandma to live a few more years? It's, it's bigger than like just our individual bubbles. I was just gonna say we all hate these masks like we all hate them they make my lips chat they make my breath like I can smell my breath I hate wearing <laughs> masks but I gotta do it anyway so for those people who don't like wearing their masks we all don't like wearing our masks. Yeah I agree I think that no extended families you don't want to be the responsible one even though you might not ever know if you were the responsible one. Anyways I do think that if people are alone it's gonna be an unfortunate thing I definitely think depression is gonna rise I think that therapists like mental health workers they're going to be in for a ride and very very grateful for all of them but i something that i've reframed too that's been helpful for me is just like what even is the holiday season now like who cares that it's december 25th or january 1st it doesn't matter we can pretend it's january 1st december 25th when we get a vaccine we can celebrate thanksgiving valentine's day christmas all of those it literally doesn't matter anymore we're all at home anyways i think it's important that we all stay connected with the people that we can stay connected with via zoom or in our immediate families and just have a huge Christmas bash, whatever, come July or August or whenever. It's <laughs> in July. Yeah. Maybe June. May? <laughs> Hopefully earlier, but you know, anyway. <laughs> Key, back to you. I feel like a news reporter. <laughs> I love it. This was so much fun spending time with you guys today. Um, for everybody at home, be sure to tune into the premiere of our new show, January 1st, right here on the Adolescent YouTube channel. Until next time, happy holidays and TTYL.